This lesson looks at the policies that central a central bank has at its disposal and how monetary policy can affect the economy in different ways. So first of all, what does the central bank do? Central bank typically tries to meet a goal or several goals such as price stability, keeping inflation within a, a range, let's say 2 to 4 percent. At the same time, they may focus on economic growth, say we want 2 percent growth per year, or full employment, let's say we want to keep unemployment below 6 percent, or even exchange rate stability, which they want a currency to trade at a particular level versus another one. Or it could be a combination of all of these three goals. And central bank will typically use different policy tools in order to achieve these objectives. So one tool is changing interest rates. So they can raise or lower interest rates in order to raise or lower the cost of borrowing money. Second, they can change reserve requirements, which essentially means that they can change how much banks can lend relative to the deposits they have. By, and this will either increase the money supply or decrease it. Uh, thirdly, they can, they can change the level of reserves they have or the level of foreign currency they hold relative to their own. So basically changing supply and demand of their own currency relative to others. And the fourth one is capital controls. These are the main tools that a central bank will use. Over re in recent years, we've seen much more uh, interesting and, and creative policy tools such as quantitative easing. Uh, but that's typically not one which, which was typically used before the financial crisis. So how do the different policies affect the economy? Well, depends what the objective of the central bank is. For example, if the central bank wants to strengthen economic growth, it could lower interest rates, lower reserve requirements, and weaken the currency. By lowering interest rates, it reduces the cost of borrowing, which means that businesses and consumers can invest and borrow at a cheaper rate and that will stimulate growth. It also reduces the amount that existing borrowers have to pay on their debt, which means that they get uh, some cash freed up in order to spend and invest. The downside of this is that it could lead to inflation. So lower interest rates can also mean a weaker currency, and that means that you, as you import goods, all those goods are a little bit more expensive because your currency is weaker. Secondly, the central bank can lower reserve requirements, which means that for every deposit a bank holds, they can lend a little bit more, and this increases the money supply. And this may lead to inflation through, through stronger growth. Thirdly, the central bank can weaken the currency by printing more of its own money and buying foreign currency to weaken the domestic currency. So basically, it supplies more of its own currency relative to other currencies. The weaker currency is good for exports, as it makes it more competitive and will stimulate growth. By the same token, however, as we saw previously, a weaker currency can cause some inflationary pressures. So if there's another objective which is to reduce inflationary pressures, imagine the economy is growing very quickly and the central bank wants to anchor inflation expectations and they think inflation, inflation is getting out of hand. They can raise interest rates and what this does is it raises the cost of borrowing so people borrow less and they spend less and they invest less and this slows the economy down. And as you have slower growth, it also results in weaker inflationary pressures. And raising interest rates can actually maybe uh, strengthen your currency relative to other currencies. And this means that your imports, uh, imported goods, will cost less. So that reduces inflationary pressures. And at the same time, your exports become less competitive, which means that uh, your economy will likely slow. So another policy tool is raising the reserve requirements, which is exactly um, the opposite of what we saw on the other slide, which is for every deposit that a bank holds, it can lend less. This decreases the money supply and it leads to a slightly weaker growth and hence weaker inflation. And then the third policy is they can intervene in the currency market. It sells its foreign currency, it sells and buys back its own currency to strengthen the domestic currency. And the stronger currency is bad for exports and reduces the cost of imports. And this helps reduce inflationary pressures through the growth channel, so weaker growth as well as uh, cheaper imports. A third policy could be exchange rate stability. So let's say there's a lot of volatility in your currency. It's going from, let's say, 10 pesos to $1, to 15 pesos to $1, to 5 pesos to $1. So really, it's all over the place. Let's say the central bank wants to target it between 9 pesos and 11 pesos, create a, tra a trading band. 
So the central bank will intervene directly and either buy or sell the currency if it's too expensive or too cheap. And this means that the central bank will typically be very active in the currency market, buying on either daily, weekly, or even monthly basis in order to stabilize the currency. The problem with that in some cases is that the central bank may be targeting the wrong exchange rate, which could lead uh, to the undervaluation of your currency or the overvaluation of your currency, uh, which could lead to economic imbalances down the road. A second policy could be to implement capital controls. And what this does is a central bank prevents private buyers and sellers of the currency from buying and selling it. So it limits the amount of money flowing in and out of the economy. And the bad thing about this is it creates rigidities in your economy. And this prevents, it could prevent foreign investment from entering your economy, which prevents growth over the long term and, and economic development. So the more capital controls and types of controls you try and implement, uh, this is actually not very good for long-term growth, although it could be good for short-term stability. So what if the government or central bank wanted to have a mixed objective, which was to stimulate economic growth without too much inflationary pressures? Well, this could be done by mixing some of the tools we talked about previously. So in order to stimulate growth, you could maybe lower interest rates, and that, was, that would reduce the cost of borrowing and increases uh, demand for goods and services and investments. But at the same time, it could maybe raise reserve requirements in order to offset a little bit of all that lending growth. At the same time, maybe it could strengthen the currency a little bit in order to make sure that inflationary pressures from abroad uh, remain weak. So what, you, what the central bank would be doing here would be stimulating the economy but constraining it in some ways. And the point here would be that you're using different policy tools in order to get a mixed objective, which is stronger growth without too much inflation. So the central bank typically enacts these types of policies over the business cycle. The business cycle is essentially uh, a period of growth in which it, the economy accelerates and then it slows down and potentially contracts and then it'll accelerate again and you have boom and recession periods and that's just typically the normal cycle, uh, business cycle. During a recession, where growth slows and inflation is low, what the central bank will typically do is cut interest rates in order to make borrowing money cheaper so people can borrow to consume and invest, and it'll kickstart uh, that process. It'll cut reserve requirements, which means that there's more money supply in the economy, and it'll weaken the currency, potentially, in order to stimulate exports. So during a recession, you can use a variety of tools or policies in order to kickstart the economy. However, during a recovery, because the central bank may say, well, uh, growth is getting out of hand, inflation is too high, what they might do is try and curb those inflationary pressures by raising interest rates or raising reserve requirements. The trick here is that the central bank wants to cool the economy and not cause it to contract. So it's, it'll be careful not to tighten policy too much. And what they try and do is kind of... Um, harmonize the business cycle so the booms aren't very large and the recessions aren't very large either. So as the economy starts overheating a little bit, they tighten monetary policy and as it starts to weaken, they loosen it. But they try not to uh, be too extreme about it in order to have a more harmonized uh, business cycle. The last policy tool, which is a traditional policy tool, but um, there's a debate whether it's actually a policy tool or not, is signaling. So this is where the central bank will announce a particular goal or target. And because they announce it, the market believes it. So they may not even have to do anything. So they may say, if inflation gets out of hand, we may tighten interest rates. And if the market believes that they're going to tighten interest rates, then maybe that could lead to uh, falling in investment or what have you. But this only works, or, or for example, if there's a speculative, uh, if the currency is weakening quite a bit, and the market's betting that the currency will weaken further. If the, if the central bank comes out and says it's going to target a particular level of, uh, of currency, uh, currency strength or currency weakness, then the market will be like, well, we're not going to bet against the central bank because it has lots of reserves and it can buy and sell the currency as it wishes. And that could help stabilize the currency without the central bank having to do anything other than just say that's what it's going to target. But this really only works if the central bank has credibility. And one key element of credibility is whether the central bank is independent or not. But there are others, of course. 
So for example, the central bank may have a good track record in imposing policies in which the market doesn't want to bet against it, or it may not. And if it doesn't have a good track record, then signaling won't be enough in that case. And they'll actually have to implement those policies so then the market realize, realizes that they are, act, they are actually in the market buying and selling the currency, for example, and that if you bet against the central bank, you might lose money. So they, they won't speculate against it.